The Dallas Stars played in their third preseason game on Thursday night. They took on the Minnesota Wild, but were ultimately defeated by a score of 5-2. to two. On today's show, we'll talk about the good from the game, we'll talk about the things I didn't like, and then we'll close out the show talking about Anton Hudobin, Jason Robertson, and how we should be feeling about the entire Robertson contract situation. All of this coming up on a Friday episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Friday, September 30th. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. Whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring Locked on Stars listener, thank you for stopping by for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. You can also find and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. Leave us a five-star rating or review as well if you enjoy the show. You can also find us on social media at Locked on Stars on Instagram and Twitter as well as my personal Twitter account, at Dane double underscore Lewis. But let's jump into last night's exhibition matchup between division rivals, the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild. And it was a kind of a rough night all around for the Dallas Stars. Not a ton of good things happening in this game, but at the same time, um, just with just about any NHL game, whether it is preseason or regular season, even in a somewhat lopsided loss, you can still pull some positives away. And I intend to do just that here to start the show out. Really, the, the two big positives are, of course, the two goals that got scored for the Stars in this game. We saw a couple of nice scoring plays from the Stars last night after in their first preseason game on Monday, they were not able to score. They score several goals in Tulsa on Tuesday and then back in the friendly confines of the AAC, they are able to get some sort of offense going, uh, although it wasn't quite enough to keep up with what Minnesota was doing, but nonetheless, still some really nice plays throughout the evening. Ty Delandria, who has had a great preseason, and it pains me to say that we're going to have to talk about him in the next segment as well of things that did not go well in this game. And I'm sure many of you that follow this team and follow other people that talk about the stars on social media already know, but we're going to save that for later because this goal that Ty Delandria scored was incredible. Uh, one of the best goals I've seen from the preseason, even though it is a small sample size, but really a great play overall, really good puck movement from the stars. And it started with a really solid defensive zone clear, um, just an all around really nice sequence from the team to clear the defensive zone, get through the neutral zone well, and then just really nice movement. I mean, it starts out once they kind of get through the neutral zone, uh, Delandria has the puck. He gives it to Miro. Miro hits Jacob Peterson across the ice. And then Peterson feeds Delandria right in the slot in front of the net. And the puck kind of takes a nice carom off of Delandria, goes into the net. And at the moment, the game was tied uh, for the Stars and the Wild. So props to Haskinen and Peterson for also doing their part in this play. It was really just poetry in motion. Uh, one of the better goals you will see, like I said, in an exhibition game game like this, but also very, very encouraging for a guy like Delandria that is looking to make this NHL roster, and it wasn't just him. Later in the game, we saw one of the newest members of this star squad in Nils Lundqvist record his first goal in a Dallas Stars jersey while quarterbacking the power play in the third period. Uh, a really nice feed from Wyatt Johnston sets up Lundqvist at the top of the zone, and he just takes a really deep shot from the blue line, I guess paying homage to Luka Doncic, who he shares the American Airlines Center with, just pulling up from deep, calling his own shot, 
and of course connecting. Uh, you could hear the puck hit the hit the crossbar. Sounds so nice. That's just one of my favorite sounds in all the sports is a puck hitting either the crossbar or one of the posts on the net before rattling in. Uh, just such a satisfying play to watch and a really nice shot from Lundqvist. That was one of the things that we talked about whenever the Stars acquired him a little under two weeks ago was that you know he has this offensive upside that he does have a really nice shot that he can utilize from the blue line that even though he's not the biggest player on the ice he does have a pretty mean and a pretty heavy shot and was on full display in this game last night and with that I think Nils is making a legitimate case throughout this preseason to not just get top four minutes, but maybe be on a top defensive pairing alongside Miro Haskin. And he and Miro looked really sharp together, playing the majority of this game at the same time. They combined for 10 shots on goal. Miro Haskin, of course, doesn't get a goal in this game, but he does get that assist on the Delandria goal, but also just making his presence felt on both sides of the ice. Haskin in skates for 22 minutes and 24 seconds. Nils Lundqvist gets 19 minutes and 37 seconds. So it was very clear that the coaching staff wanted to run this duo out there last night, and they wanted to see how they could play together. And I have to imagine that they were pleased with what they saw from both players, and I think they could make for a really good pairing, which I know is something that Stars fans and other Stars media members have been discussing since Lundqvist was acquired. But now we're seeing it come to fruition, and I think that that's really exciting. And I think just you you got to feel great for Nils Lundqvist, a guy who not necessarily has been written off, but just was kind of in a really weird position in New York where there just wasn't a spot for him on a roster that was already filled with some other defensemen and just kind of even at the prospect level, just not really a spot for Nils Lundqvist to go. And, you know, so far, even though, again, the sample size is small and it is just the preseason, we're starting to see this trade potentially pay off for the Stars. Like like we've said before, this trade could be beneficial for both teams. The Rangers are, of course, you know, they now have a little bit more draft capital. Things may not pay off for them immediately like it could for the Stars, but... I'm incredibly encouraged by what I've seen from Nils Lundqvist early on. He still does have a ways to go. There is still some of the preseason left. And even throughout the regular season, I imagine if he gets a lot of play time, that we will continue to see him grow and develop into being a consistent, reliable defenseman in this league. And maybe he gets to stay with the Stars long term. Maybe we're potentially seeing a great Dallas Stars defensive duo forming right before our eyes with Miro Haskinen and Nils Lundqvist. That seems maybe a little bit extreme. That could be way far down the road, but I was very encouraged. A game where there weren't always a whole lot of positives to pull away. Really liked what I saw from number five and number four together on the ice. Well, coming up next, we will continue to talk about last night's game, but we're going to talk about where things went wrong. There were several things in last night's game that I was not a huge fan of. Some of the stuff actually had to do with the style of play and the hockey that was being played, and some of it just had to do with the fact that it seemed like too many Dallas Stars were down on the ice and or getting hurt. More on that after a quick break. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your football betting info this season. Find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Major League Baseball playoffs right around the corner. NBA and NHL regular seasons are coming very, very soon. And of course, the NFL is in full swing. If you want to bet on any of those, be sure to do it at betonline.net. You can head to their website right now or use your mobile device to get more information about the trends happening around the sports world. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. All right, let's take a shift in focus from last night's preseason game between the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild. Thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. And while there were some good things to pull away from last night's matchup, Nils Lundqvist gets a nice goal, Ty Delandria gets a really nice goal off of some really impressive playmaking, there were still some things that I was not a huge fan of. And speaking of Ty Delandria, one of those things was the amount of injuries and hits and damage that seems to be being dealt to the Dallas Stars. In an exhibition game, a game where you don't really expect to see players getting injured, uh, and thankfully I don't think things are as bad as maybe they seemed in the moment, but there was just several moments throughout the evening where I, as long as many others, thought, man, we 
that can we stop for a second? Can we just make sure everyone's okay and reevaluate what we're doing here? We're playing a preseason hockey game that has no meaning, no significance in the long term for either franchise. It all started in the beginning. Rope Hints takes a dirty hit. Let's just call it what it was. It was not a clean play. A dirty hit by some guy named Brandon Baddock. A guy I've never heard of before, and even looking up on him up on the NHL's website, he has one game of NHL experience, uh, a late-round pick back in the 2014 NHL draft. Not a lot of NHL time, and a hit like that is not going to warrant you to get much more NHL time. In fact, I don't think he got any more ice time after that hit on Rope Hints. Coach Pete DeBoer called it a dirty hit afterwards. Thankfully, Rope was able to come back and play in the game after having to go down the tunnel uh, and go back to the locker room after that hit absolutely ridiculous to be making a play like that in the preseason. I mean, doing it in the regular season, the puck had been away from Rope for a good amount where you shouldn't be making that hit, but to do it in a meaningless preseason game, I don't know what you're trying to prove. Uh, you've been around this league for a while. Brandon Baddock, again, don't, don't really know a whole lot about you, but I, I can't imagine that a move like that is going to put a positive light on you uh, when the Minnesota Wild coaching staff is making their cuts. Ridiculous play, especially being a hit on a guy that the Stars are going to be relying on so much this season. Thankfully, Rope Hints does appear to be okay. Tyler Sagan, though, as well, uh, having a scary moment. Not necessarily something that a Minnesota Wild player caused. Um, it looked just kind of like a freak accident of Tyler Sagan taking a scary crash into the boards, but he also was able to continue playing. Seemed to be okay at the time of recording this. Haven't really seen too much develop on that. I think it was just kind of a bang-bang accident, scary play. But there was a moment there where you're like, we need Tyler Sagan to be healthy this season. We need him to be on the ice consistently for this team. We need him to have this big, massive comeback season for the Stars. And the Stars desperately need him on the ice. So thankfully, looks like Rope and Tyler are going to be okay. And hopefully they're able to rest up, get the treatment that they need in order to continue to move on and uh, recover as best as they can before the regular season arrives. But unfortunately, there was one injury to a player that could potentially sideline him for a few weeks. Ty Delandria, who had a great night, a great early part of the game scoring that first goal for the Stars, is having a really nice preseason, both at training camp and the other preseason games. This is a guy that myself and many other Team, people that follow this Stars team have been excited about it. It's finally his moment to shine in the NHL. And Ty Delandria leaves the game with what ended up being a broken finger. I know Matt DeFranks reported it. Mike Heike saw Yusuf from hearing from Pete DeBoer after the game. A broken finger that thankfully will not require surgery for Ty Delandria, but he will likely miss at least a couple of weeks. Uh, the Stars regular season opener, or home opener at least, um, or actually, no, season opener because they open in Nashville and then play in Dallas starting 13 days from now, give or take, about around two weeks. So maybe he's able to come back in time for the start of the season, but also maybe not. I think there's a very real chance that Delandria could miss the open of the season. I and mean, I'm saying that as if I just assume he's going to be on the NHL roster. I think so far he's earned a spot somewhere on this NHL roster. So I really hope that once he's able to come back from injury, that he's able to find a spot somewhere in the four forward lines and he's able to play and hopefully make a positive impact on this team like he's been doing in the preseason. Such a shame to see happen. Really have been a rooting for Delandria. I know many of you have been doing the same as well. Really do hope that he's able to recover. Again, that's not really something that you can peg on a Minnesota Wild player. I believe it was on a blocked shot attempt. Um, just kind of a weird freaky play that you don't see super often or maybe it does happen and players just don't talk about it as much because we find out a lot of times at the end of seasons and at the end of playoff runs that players play through the wildest type of injuries. But this obviously something that Delandre was having a hard time fighting as it now seems that it's going to take him out for a little bit. But hopefully we'll see number 10 back on the ice sometime soon. But as far as the things I didn't like actually happening within the game, I think the biggest glaring issue was the Stars' inability to clear the defensive zone. And I know that that was a massive issue for this team last season. And there were some moments where it did look good on the play where Delandria scores. That was a really nice zone exit by the Stars. They navigated the neutral zone well. I think that they've done a better job at actually skating the puck into the offensive zone rather than just dumping and chasing. But there were several moments during this game last night against the Wild where I mean, you can also give credit to the Wild for forechecking the way that they did, but the Stars just could not get out of their own defensive zone, and that leaves them vulnerable. It makes them tired. It makes you unable to change players, and it also just puts your goalie in a bad situation where they're you know, having to 
I mean, you know, they're not getting to rest as much. They're on edge. They're working a little bit harder to move around and try to watch this puck, and it just makes life difficult for everyone involved defensively. And several of the goals that Minnesota scored, you can definitely credit to the fact that the Stars were not doing a very good job of navigating the puck and clearing it out of the defensive zone. Again, it's probably a mixture of that, as well as Minnesota doing a good job for checking and doing their best to keep the puck in the zone. It's something that I'm not going to panic on or worry about yet because it is the preseason. This is not the full NHL roster for the Stars. It certainly was not the full NHL roster for the Wild, which maybe should be concerning because while the Stars were playing a decent amount of guys that will be on the NHL roster, the Wild, not so much. They certainly did have some players out there. I know that they had their captain Spurgeon out there. They had Matt Zuccarello, former Dallas star Matt Zuccarello, getting a goal in this game. That was my least favorite part. Uh, was just the Stars seemingly sometimes being competent defensively and clearing well, and sometimes they just were not. And I think that that's something that once you get the traditional normal rotation of defensemen out there, as well as the forwards too, I think that that's something that will just come with time and practice, and hopefully that's something that the team and the coaching staff can work around because that was something that the Stars just had a difficult time with last season. And if they do that again this year, it's going to make it incredibly difficult for them to consistently compete in games because if this preseason has been any indication, and I know it's very different than what we're going to see in a couple weeks whenever they open the regular season, this just is not really a Stars team that is meant to play from behind, at least with these massive goal deficits. Maybe the Stars team can compete night in and night out if they're down one, maybe two goals, but if the lead ever grows past two goals, it's going to be very difficult for this Stars team to come back and try to be competitive and win some games and come from behind fashion. So one way you can avoid that is if you can clear the puck from your own defensive zone. All right, let's close out. Continuing, I guess, kind of on the trend of things I was not a huge fan of um, from last night's game as well. As We got to talk a little bit of Jason Robertson to close out the week. We won't have another episode out until Monday. Who knows if anything is going to happen. I imagine it'll be a pretty quiet weekend on the front of Jason Robertson. But before we talk about that, let's talk about Anton Hudobin. We talked about some of the mishaps defensively, and I think that as a result, that was a key contributor into the fact that Anton Hudobin did not look very good in last night's game. He surrenders five goals and posts a .821 save percentage. And it's just unfortunate. I hate it, one, initially, because, I mean, Anton Hudobin is a guy that, even if you're not a Stars fan, I feel like you just love to cheer for just because of the, the kind of personality that he has, the kind of player, the kind of guy that he is. Generally a cheerful and happy guy, but also a fierce competitor. I'm mean, a guy that I know I've been rooting for to come back and hopefully have at least one more healthy season and the NHL or AHL level. It's clear that this guy loves the sport of hockey and wants to continue playing, wants to continue to compete. But last night was a rough outing. Like I said, in the last segment, there weren't a whole lot of guys on this Minnesota roster that are going to be NHLers this season. I mean, like I said, there were a few guys that are NHL players that are really, really good. And some of these guys are still prospects. Some of these guys are still developing and or some of them, I mean, let's just face it. Now, the Stars have some of these guys, too, aren't necessarily very good and might not see the NHL, at least with the club that they're with now. And so it just makes me a little bit nervous as well as a little bit sad that Hugh Dobin uh, not performing how we really wanted him to this preseason, but makes me nervous for the fact that, you know, the Stars might not be able to deal him if they're even interested in doing so. I know that that's been a pretty hot topic this offseason, especially in terms of trying to re-sign Jason Robertson and bring him back to the team for good because Anton Hudobin has that just over $3 million cap hit. And I imagine that that's something that, if possible, the Stars would maybe look to try to move on from. It seems the more and more that we go on that Jake Ottinger and Scott Wedgwood are going to be the one-two goalie tandem for this star squad. And that kind of leaves Hugh Dobin as the odd man out. But you almost really don't want to have him at the AHL level because then that could potentially take away games from guys like Matt Murray, really young goaltenders that are looking to develop and grow and eventually maybe become guys that play for the Stars or maybe could play for another team somewhere down the road. You don't really want to have a guy in his mid to late 30s taking up too many AHL minutes for young players who still have the majority of their career ahead of them. It sucks. It's an unfortunate situation all around for Anton Hudobin. I mean, it's not. It's kind of a lose-lose situation. Is that I don't know if he's going to make the NHL roster, and I don't really know what use the Stars could use for him on the AHL roster. It's just a very sad, unfortunate, and weird situation, and I don't know what the demand would be for a guy like Anton Hudobin on the market right now. 
I mean, I think it would take a pretty drastic injury or a strong lack of depth for some team across the NHL to say, hey, we'll take Anton Hudobin because I don't think he's making a case to be a starting goaltender right now. You could maybe argue for a backup, but even then, uh, there, there's probably some other different options out there for backup goaltenders across the NHL. And that's, again, assuming the Stars are even interested in trading Anton Hudobin. I know that that's just one of the easier players to talk about and point to when you talk about trying to get some of the guys on the team off the books to open up more cap space to give Jason Robertson a little bit more money to get him to hopefully soon sign back with this Stars team. Because I think with Jason Robertson, we've started to creep into the panic zone. And I know I, I've been a generally positive person with this subject over the summer and even talking with my friends saying, I think it's going to be fine. And I know many other people have been that way as well, but I'm starting to think maybe we're just saying that to make ourselves feel better. I'm, I'm legitimately starting to get nervous over this situation. I think it's just because it's drug out for so long that I'm just anxious and I'm just waiting for the news to break. And it's just reached worst case scenario in my head that, Jason Robertson maybe could not be playing with this team, the Dallas Stars, come the opening night of the season and what is just under two weeks away. You know, you start to hear the rumors and the murmurs. Whether or not they're legit, it still just puts that fear into your head that other teams could be inquiring on him. I haven't really seen anything set in stone as far as teams reaching out or inquiring or trying to make an offer sheet. Haven't really seen anything on that at the time of recording this, but it's just gone on for a while. At first, it was, okay, he'll sign sometime over the summer. He doesn't really sign over the summer. Okay, we get you know a month away from training camp. Okay, he'll sign before training camp. Training camp comes and goes. Okay, well, he'll sign you know in like middle of training camp after the first preseason game. We're three preseason games deep and still no signing for Jason Robertson and really no new development. I feel like we've been hearing since the middle of the summer that both parties are negotiating and working together on a new deal. But I think that that's just really code for not a whole lot is being done. And it, it's just a wacky situation because Jason Robertson, rightfully so, and I think his camp as well, knows what he's worth. He's worth a lot of money. He's worth more than about the $6.3 million that the Stars can give him right now. But at the same time, there's not too many teams out there in the NHL world that could give him that kind of money. There are a few teams. I know the Buffalo Sabres are a team that many people have brought up that could potentially make an offer sheet for Jason Robertson with their cap space. But do you, I mean, would Jason Robertson want to go play in Buffalo? I'm not entirely sure. He's a relatively quiet guy on that front of, you know, and I think that's the NHL in general. You don't always hear too many players saying, oh, yeah, you know, I, I would leave the city I play for. Or I want to go play for this club. I want to go play in this city. It's just a, a tense situation that continues to just get more and more nerve wracking. I know for me, as well as many other people who follow this team out there, and I'm just genuinely out of ideas on when or if this happens. I mean, I'm just ready for it to be over, but at the same time, also not ready for it to be over because what if it being over means that Jason Robertson is playing in a different sweater in a different city for a different club? Because if he doesn't play for this Dallas Stars team, that is a detrimental blow to this roster, to this team, to this locker room, to the way they play on the ice. I mean, obviously there are other players. He is not the do or die piece for this team. He's not the only guy out there that can produce, but you you can't just replace a 40 goal scorer uh, with just anybody. And, and especially as the Dallas Stars, a team that recently has struggled to put the puck in the back of the net. You can't just pull a guy out of thin air and say, okay, replace Jason Robertson. Jason Robertson is a rarity in this organization, a guy that the Stars absolutely 100% need on their roster if they want to be competitive at all in the Central Division. Without Jason Robertson, uh, I think it's almost a safe bet to say the Stars do not make the postseason. I think with him on the roster, their chances go up a ton because, again, he's a 40-goal scorer in his sophomore season and still looking to build upwards. I bet he could get 40 again, if not knock on the door of 50, given what we've seen from him and what we know guys can do in Pete DeBoer-led systems. So I'm not trying to stir up panic in anyone's mind, even though I did say we're starting to kind of creep into that panic zone, but I genuinely just have no idea what to expect anymore. When are we going to hear something 
And, and what's it going to take to get Robertson here? Can they deal Anton Udovin? Can they deal Roddick Foxa? Can they try to deal somebody else? I want to imagine that maybe the Stars front office is doing a little bit more work than Jason Robertson's camp. I think I imagine Robo in his camp have made it clear what they want, what they want Jason to be paid, and the Stars are having to look to find a way to try to accommodate that while also not putting the team in a bad situation. It's a messy situation in general, but like we've been saying for months, hopefully it's resolved soon and hopefully it ends with Jason Robertson in a Stars sweater. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Help us reach 1,000 subs by the end of 2022. Find and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. You can find and follow us on social media as well at Locked on Stars on Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. Be sure to tune in back here on Monday as we continue to cover the Dallas Stars preseason. I imagine there could be a few more roster cuts. I know uh, there's been some reports that the, the by sometime next week, we could start to see a more realistic NHL type roster with more cuts coming very, very soon. So these last, these next few preseason games, the so Stars play a game on Saturday. That could be a potential final tryout, final show for this coaching staff for guys to make a case whether or not they should be on the NHL roster. So be sure to tune in on Monday for more Dallas Stars preseason coverage content. Hope you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you back here on Monday. <laughs>